industry on parade. A pictorial review of events in business and industry produced each week by the National Association of Manufacturers. Industry on Parade stops off at the New York waterfront for a look at some of the new ideas being adopted by the great American shipping industries. Let's visit the Hudson River Pier of the Moore-McCormick lines and see a few of the innovations in cargo handling methods adopted during the past few years. When a cargo liner is about to sail, the bustle of activity is much like that to be found when a passenger liner leaves, except, of course, that it's goods instead of people that converge on the pier from all parts of the nation. The use of pallets and forklift trucks has relieved the hard-working longshoremen of much of the back-breaking labor that formerly was his lot. The cases and bags are stacked on the pallets, which then can be shifted about the pier or hoisted right into the ship's hold. But this cargo is going into a steel container called a cargo van first. The cargo vans are proving especially useful in the safe shipment of small cargo that's more susceptible to pilferage or damage in handling. The vans are scientifically and snugly packed, so goods can't shift or break loose, either when being loaded or during the ocean voyage. Not only does it save storage space aboard ship, but in a cargo van, a shipment is kept under lock and key until it reaches its destination. In days gone by, and even today in the ports of some nations, cargo is manhandled aboard ship, trundled up gangways, then down into the holes on the backs of men. Tortuous, expensive business compared to methods like these. Only U.S. style speed, service and efficiency have allowed American shipping firms to meet foreign competition with its vastly lower wages. The same sort of know-how that created the wide array of American industrial products we see moving out to ready markets everywhere in the free world. For the best in the world, you must have the best tires. And not even Joe Stalin has any doubts about where they... After the tires come barrels of salt cod all ingeniously stowed away according to a plan carefully thought out in advance. One day spent in watching the loading of a cargo liner gives a good idea of the tremendous scope and variety of production here in America. It's a real achievement on the part of Moore McCormick and other land, sea and air transport industries that they've been able to keep the goods moving as fast as our farms and factories turn it out. Meet a couple of young men named Lloyd and F. Briggs Dalzell, who for the past nine years have directed the operations of one of the biggest tugboat companies in the busiest harbor in the world. The scene is, of course, New York, and the dispatcher's office of the Dalzell Towing Company. From this nerve center are controlled the movements of 38 tugs that ply hundreds of miles each day back and forth over the North River, the East River, the Lower Bay, and the rest of this busy port, attending to a variety of highly essential duties. Calls from customers flood the office of the dispatcher who must deploy the fleet of tugs by radio telephone in such a way that each tug can move from one assignment to the next with a minimum of lost time. Since calls for tugs come in at all hours of the day and night and there are frequent time changes, keeping the organization running efficiently takes some doing. 
This captain has been dispatched to the side of an incoming freighter that needs plenty of skilled assistance in reaching a North River pier in the face of a brisk wind and powerful, tricky tidal currents. Just one of the daily chores of these workhorses of the harbor, without which many of the port's facilities could not be used, even by medium-sized ships, like the one here being docked. Whistle signals allow ship and tugs to work smoothly together. From here, our tug may be dispatched across the Hudson to New Jersey to handle barge loads of the coal that's brought into New York City almost exclusively by this method. Coal for homes, for factories, for steam and electricity. Then perhaps help another ship put out to sea or lead a disabled vessel to the shipyard or help put out a fire or haul heavy cargo. Unimpressive little craft, but what would New York do without them? History shows that we Americans have attained the highest standard of living in the world. The competitive American system based on freedom for the individual has encouraged us to develop new and better raw materials and to improve our buildings, equipment and tools. As a result, we now produce three to four times more per hour than we did in 1850, while we enjoy nearly twice as much leisure. We can have an even higher standard of living in the future by increasing our productivity, which will mean more and better products for all. <laughs>